Folks, Thursday night, welcome aboard Cacophony. Big night tonight. Last time these guys went back in time without the assistance of the time travel amulet's owner. Uh, they were successful, but we'll get into that more here in a minute. Follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter, take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to shoot the shit about D&D, join our Discord. If you want to buy cool stuff like this murder hobocon shirt or a phone case or a throw pillow. Duvet cover. Link, duvet cover. The link is somewhere on here. I think it's up top, maybe. Underwear. Uh, uh, underwear is not listed. That's oh. not safe. So I don't have the link on there. Uh, also, if you are in the market for some custom dice, buzz on over to Twitter, hit up at pirate dog dice, see if they've got time or the desire to make you some shit. And if your game smells like shit, unlike ours, because ours smells like success, run on over to oddfishgames.com and find their adventure sense. Over 60 different scents for your olfactory pleasure. They also make something called the Shine System. So if you want to be a writer just like me, only gooder, uh, check out their Shine System. And again, uh, folks, you've got less than 12 hours to sign up for Murder Hobo Con this Saturday and Sunday. 15 bucks gets you in the door both days, and the games are free. All you got to do is sign up for them. No extra charge. Uh, so this is it. Final push. Uh, we hope to see you there. If not, eh, I don't want to hear you bitching about, oh, I never get to play D&D. Uh, Ian, you're welcome for that stroke I just gave you. Folks, this is the Cacophony Edition. Let's go ahead and introduce you to the players. Uh, they are out of normal position. So I will start with Carrie. Carrie, who are you and who do you play? So I play Camille, uh, wizard necromancer. And on Cacophony, and then on the B side of uh, Frank's campaign, I play a barbarian, Crendor Sue. And hopefully I've preemptively taken the dogs out, so I won't have to be dog wrangler tonight as well. Very <laughs> good. Uh, David, you are up next. Same question, different answers. Ah, uh, I'm David. <laughs> and tonight I'll be playing Zadar here on Cacophony. Otherwise, you can catch me on our every other day, uh, Saturday campaign. Uh, that is uh, the Calamity campaign. I play Ingve on the A side and Crow on the B side. And uh, you can catch me on Between the Rolls uh, most of the time and definitely uh, on the Iron DM Socium project that we're working on now. And uh, yeah, that's in every once in a while on in one shot. So, uh, like I said, I'll be playing Zadar tonight, the Arcane Trickster Changeling. So we'll see how that goes. Very good. Now, folks, I'd go ahead and do a recap, but it's going to be kind of worthless because these yahoos activated the time travel amulet after. I don't know what I would call normal play. Uh, they considered uh, the casualties of the innocent to be too much and well, have sent. I didn't. But... <laughs> yeah. Zadar. Zadar is the one with the soul here. So I didn't want to end up in prison or Camille end up in prison. So. Whatever, man. Uh, we anyway, can't end like that. <laughs> these guys were chasing uh, someone that they have discovered is Gadget. Uh, may or may not have ties to Mortimer J. Sneed, definitely a suspect in the breaking of the robotic guards of Nathian, the gnomish capital, where these guys have spent the better part of, I think, three About months month. now. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. It's been a long time. <laughs> a month out. in game time, I think three months. Well, you know what? In all honesty, you were slated to get out of that shit hole. Shut up. Just shut up. <laughs> so, uh, these guys have opted to pull out the time travel amulet. Uh, it does take three people to operate it. So they grabbed one of the witnesses who didn't witness anything. A gnomish female had her hold the golden chain. Uh, Zadar did his best and with a nat 20 sent them back three hours in time uh, to just outside of Cooper's Tavern. Uh, a great place. Great story last time, too. Uh, we'll see if it pans out again. Because uh, they discovered sandwiches. Uh, <laughs> but that was before they time traveled, so God only knows what happened. Uh, we will rejoin them. You guys are 
fully healed, fully rested, uh, just like last time. You have not had any encounters. You have found seven. Now your eighth screamer that you hired uh, outside of Cooper's. Do you know time travel? Have you heard of time travel? Are you a public speaker? Know anything about time travel? Would you like to do this? So your money is is, is paying off. You found eight. Uh, earlier, you had found 11. <laughs> so, you know, eh. <clears throat> you may find it again. Uh, you guys are outside of Cooper's. You just saw yourselves go inside of Cooper's for lunch. Zadar, you were supposed to change form. What form have you decided upon? Okay, Zadar pulls the hood up and changes, <laughs> pulls the face of Val Kilmer. Ah, oh, nice. <laughs> Val Kilmer, Top Gun. Val Kilmer, Real Genius. Val Kilmer, Willow. Tombstone. Uh, no, Val Nick Kilmer Rivers. Tombstone. You know, the name came to me when I was shaving. <laughs> Which one was Nick Rivers? Top Secret. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, you but, didn't see that one. Okay. Uh, never mind. Okay. Okay. Oh, I've seen it. It's an 80s Top gun. Movie. Top gun. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, you pull your hood up. Of course, Camille does not have the ability to do any changing. No. Uh, and the other female, the gnome, looks around and immediately, let's see, odd even, oh, God. even turns to Camille and demands to know what the hell just happened we were in front of the destruction she's looking around there's no smoke no fire no billowing plumes she is completely puzzled now and and demands answers camille what do you want to tell her <sighs> okay so <laughs> we've been trying to capture this person who's been wreaking havoc in the city we had to get out of there i want to keep you safe though so i want to take you to a friend that you can hang out with until we can come back for you uh i don't need your friend i need my husband so that tells me nothing uh so good day and she starts to walk off Oh, and yeah, with that. I don't have anything, do I? Oh, but, I get... Let me yeah, you which, got which direction she's going to go. She is going to go to the right, which would take her down towards the Church of Nathian and Dirigible Farms. Pretty much back where you guys came from. Okay. Keeping in mind that there's nothing going on. But give me a perception check. <clears throat> Gonna end horribly. <laughs> uh, 13. Uh, let's see. Perception. Mm. Uh, the 24. You see Deacon Jones uh, leaving Cooper's. Apparently, he had an early lunch. Uh, Nonplussed at you. Pushes the sandwich board screamer out of the way. Sees Camille. Apparently still upset about taking the staff to the nuts. My aunt and had it coming. He begins to wander down the hill towards the church. Uh, and he sees the young lady. I turn to Sadar and I'm like really don't need to do anything with her they'll just think she's crazy i mean that's possible that's possible there will be two of her that's the problem <laughs> there'll be two of her so i mean unless she runs into herself you know i mean there's no like you know consequences other than just the sheer just <laughs> abject horror of running into yourself you know so but <laughs> Uh, I mean, we could do that, or um... I say we let it go. We're gonna get Hortense. Hortense, it has been a long time since I've seen you, Pastor. It's been a long time since I've seen you as well. The female starts to head over there. Hortense, 
Hortense Rockjaw, where is your husband? Oh, oh God. Seriously? <laughs> I, Pastor, you would not believe it what I told what I just had happen. Um and she begins to babble incessantly, pointing at you two. Uh in the meantime. Uh, uh, how's she pointing at me? I mean, I don't think she saw me change. <laughs> no, you've got your hood up. Yeah, yeah, I do. So she doesn't know it's not you. She okay. knows it's Camille. Okay. Um, and the deacon, of course, being a big fan of Camille and Zadar, is interested. Okay. <laughs> um, oh, I think uh, you're, you're muted, you're muted. <laughs> Camille. We need to get out right now. Yeah, we do. So I'm just going to leave the hood up at, at this, and we'll just say, Deacon, she's nuts. <laughs> we'll Zadar, person comes up to you. Time travel? Do you understand time travel? You ever been time travel? You know anything about time travel? Actually, I do. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you, you good man. We'll be turn, there at the. He turns at around symposium. and points to his back. It's a symposium. It's a symposium opportunity. Hortense Rockjaw grabs the deacon and begins to drag him, uh, trying to run away. Okay. Keep in mind, it's right about noon. <laughs> There like I said, everywhere. one of the options is we can enlist the help of ourselves to get this done, or <laughs> we can, I don't know, we've yeah, got a lot of caveats. Yeah, the timeline at all. <laughs> no, because we're the variants in this, so, you know. You'd think that. Mm -hmm. so, so, are you the real ones? Are they the real ones? Exactly. <laughs> so, okay. Okay. Uh, Okay, mm. time's ticking, so we, we got to get moving. So, uh, who wants what to do you think against me? Oh, What's that? Eight. Eight. Re roll. Seven. Five. Uh, uh, Deacon's a little confused right now, so he starts dragging his feet and slowing her progress. He also has a hold of her hand, so she can either flee or drag him. <laughs> okay, yeah, we need to go. Yeah, yeah, we need so to get out of what here. what time, so on the Screamers, what time were they supposed to meet, the, our people supposed to meet us to for this job that we were trying to? Tomorrow at dawn. Okay. So that's uh, I should have set, I should have set that time. <laughs> no, that's fine. Um, so I think we need to head back to where everything happened and kind of mm -hmm. skulk around. We we do. We have to get to Dirigible Farms and find yes. out what the hell happened. Okay. That's All right. Fair. Just going to leave Hortense behind? Yeah, there's nothing we can yeah, do about at this, that. Yeah, at this point, yeah. There, I mean, Kat's out of, out of the bag, whether or not anybody believes her. Yeah, I said Kat. And Kat's in the picture. Uh, so the butterfly effect is in full swing. There's it is. It is. <laughs> Weezer, you're on the World Wide Web. As you guys start to flee, uh, the deacon is completely confused. Whoa, you two! You need to come back here. And uh, I, I put up down my hood, and I was just, "Who are you talking to?" Um, looks at Hortense. Who's that? I, I don't know, but she she is definitely involved in this. I've been um, with him the whole time. I, yeah, I yeah. I, we about. have no idea what she's talking about. She's been with me the whole time. You know, been with. Yeah, both, both of <laughs> both of you persuasion. Oh God! <laughs> oh, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Deception. Deception. Okay. <laughs> so uh yeah 15 we plus 10 16. so 25 <laughs> i got 16 she hortense keeps pulling on the I, deacon. I pick camille up and put a big kiss on him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah the, the, the deacon is totally confused 
suggests that he take Hortense back to the temple and, and get her something cool to drink. You guys continue to head away, I assume? Yes, we do. We start, well, honey, we got to get going. <laughs> yes, we do. You have now abandoned an individual three hours before her time. Wow. There are two of them in this scenario. Oh, yeah. You guys head down the main street and you see Colonel Clank and two of his associates headed west back towards the bay coming from Dirigible Farms. Hello, heroin. How are you? Uh, I am well. How are you? Not bad. Just on normal patrol. We've got an update on the problem that we had. An individual named Gadget, a male, we believe, a uh, gnome, uh, wearing a long leather trench coat, is responsible, and we are seeking them. Are you familiar with this individual? I am not. Where were you seeking them from? Uh, we have guards everywhere. Uh, Brock Hardjaw and Hente are uh, aloft somewhere. He scans the sky, does not see anyone. Uh, and we are uh, uh, excuse me, citizen, who are you? Oh, uh, I'm This is I'm my sorry. new boyfriend. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I see. Tall. Yes, very. <laughs> Sexy, right? Yes, beware the throat cancer. You're, you're, uh, you're <laughs> seeming play volleyball, so <laughs> very nice. Uh, Colonel Clank is unimpressed because he is an automaton, right? Uh, he and his two uh colleagues are scanning the perimeter. Uh, well, have a good day, uh, and enjoy yourselves. You as well. You guys are hungry. I don't think we oh. have time to be hungry. <laughs> we don't have time to be hungry. I'm sure I have rations in the, the bag of holding. So, so yeah, so we can pull out some like cheese. I know we have cheese or something like that and a cracker we and we're good to go. You have, you have a lot of cheese, actually. Oh, yeah. Okay, so here we go. Uh, you are uh, coming down, uh, but you're at the river. Okay. That's where we are right now. We're at the river. We need correct. to get over to you, Dirigible Farms, correct? Yeah. Correct. Uh, yes. Yes, we so do. So what's the least obtrusive way we can get there? You know, actually, actually, I'm going to put you guys here on the bridge. Okay. Okay. That that kind of sounds like the scenario that we were just playing out. So. Yeah. Uh, you hear the familiar voice of Deacon Jones trying to calm... Uh, Lady Hardjaw, and they are coming up behind you. Okay. Go. <laughs> yeah, we gotta go. So, thank you, Colonel. Uh, yeah, uh, we'll uh, we'll be on the lookout for this individual. Uh, the deacon might have trouble with this individual. She seems a little unbalanced, so you might want to hang out with him. Thank you, citizen. We will take care of it. All right. Very good. <laughs> you guys make it across the bridge. However, there is a long line of cart traffic, oxen with wagons, uh, people with carts. There seems to be a problem. What kind of problem? Give me perception checks, uh, both yeah. of you. Oh, Weezer, okay. you're cutting into my area. 12. <laughs> Oh, let's see. That perception check, correct? Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, that'll be 18 for Zadar. 18 for Zadar. Uh, you notice, because you're taller, that uh, there seems to be a jackknife cart up ahead. Uh, we got a real, uh, real problem here. There's a jackknife cart and, uh, the oxen are everywhere. Uh, people are scrambling. It's going to be a delay on the 405. Wow. I can't <laughs> hear you at all. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah. I can hear you. Okay. Yes. So we oh. got a jackknife on the 405. So <laughs> we got a cart to get around. No, cause I can't hear Zadar either. Uh oh, we can hear you. Test, test one, two. Testing, test. testing. 
All right. I don't know. <laughs> well, folks, well. I think she's not <laughs> on anything. We have some technical difficulties. Uh, yeah, you're talking. Yeah, I know, but I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? No. I can't hear either of you. Test, test, test. Test, test. I can hear you fine, Frank. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. Team. One, two, one, two, one, two. Nothing. Can you hear you? It's fine. We can go on. I can just listen through the through that. And I can hear you in there. Well, there will be a delay. That's fine. This whole time continuum thing. <laughs> well, do you have a? Uh... Did my change? You'll need to lean forward, though. Test, test, test. Are you? Test, test. Mm -hmm. Test, test. Well, I have to change that. <laughs> test. test. And there. Test. Oh, try it on the headphones. Uh, David, go with a test count. Test count. Testing one, two. It's Mr. Microphone. Hey, good yeah, looking. We'll be back to pick you up later. I think you have a short in your microphone. Probably. Uh, can, you, can you guys hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. If I hold it like this, it works. Okay. That'll be a pain in the ass. <laughs> okay, where were we? Uh, there's a jackknife on the 405. That's right. There's a jackknife on the 405. You guys are stuck right here. Uh, traffic is backing up in front of the Temple of Nathian. Uh, well, I mean, I'm pretty dexterous. I mean, how backed up is it? Can we, like, climb over this thing? Or? You're very dexterous. She is not. So, oh. yes, you can climb over it. You can go up, see if you can help. Uh, everybody is getting pissed. Uh, it's rush hour traffic. Uh, la, 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 la. Okay. Uh, I have an idea. How big is this thing? Which one? Uh, okay. So are we one cart or two carts? About eight. Eight carts? Oh, geez. One, one cart is overturned, but there's seven others in a row. Oh, man. Music begins to play from one of the carts up high. Uh, Zadar, you notice a group of traveling halfling bards. Oh, okay. And they are starting to sing road songs to try and keep the people appeased. Uh, one halfling is holding out a hat uh, mm -hmm. saying, who can throw a coin into the hat? Yeah, I'll, I'll take a silver piece and try to make it into the hat. Hit it. All right. Uh, does a 15 hit? Uh, yeah, 15 hits. Uh, half lane uh, says thank you. Camille, uh, you are now being verbally berated by Hortense Rockjaw uh, as the deacon tries to pull her away from you. 
Uh, all she can do is scream, what have you done to me? What have you done to my family? Where is my husband? Brock! I'm Brock! To... Oh, is my thing working? We need to get the hell out of here. <laughs> yeah, your microphone's not working. Knock that cat off the fucking couch. He's trying to help. <laughs> are you are you blinking? How about now? Yeah, now yeah, we, can... we can hear you now. Um. Oh, say okay. She's yelling at me. Um, I say, I don't know what your problem is, lady. I I have to go. Um. Okay. How far are we from the the thing? The... You're about halfway up there. Halfway up there? Okay. Mm -hmm. Um do I have 90 feet to clear it? What like do you mean? if I'm if I moved like Camille 90 feet, would 90 feet put her on the other side of this? The jackknife? Uh no, it would put it right up front though. Oh, okay. Uh and that ain't going to work. Uh, we'll just say, well, we don't know what's you know what's going on with her, Deacon. So <laughs> we gotta go. <laughs> okay, are you gonna blast her up to the top, uh, Camille? Uh, to the top of it. So, well, a person. Is, is it a person or is it an object? Uh, I'm small. I could be an object. You magically twist space around another creature you can see within range. The target must succeed a constitution saving throw to resist. If not, the target is teleported or they can fail it on purpose. I assume you want to be teleported on purpose, Camille? Yes. Okay, fair enough. Uh, you do your warp, you do the time warp, yep. uh, and you two are up front. Yep. So, all right. So, yeah, let's get around, over, under, or whatever to get around this. And both of you give me perception checks. Uh, 15. 19. Both of you notice some of the gnomes trying to help our future dead gnomes. Oh, God, this is... Um, mm. They're yeah. clearly to be helping try and move. They seem like genuinely nice people. Do you guys wish to skirt around them and head off to dirigible farms or do something else? We need to cause more chaos so they stay here. <laughs> and how do we do that? Um, Is any of this like carrying hay or anything? But that, that would just burn down everything around us. So. Oh yeah, there's hay, there's uh, some pigs, uh, there's different merchants with boxes. Uh, okay. You all, you both hear the expelling of gas. We both hear the expelling of gas. Like, Does that mean there's a thing overhead? There is a balloon moving away from dirigible farms. That, uh, do we recognize the balloon? Yes. yes, it was the balloon that you saw when you were dealing with Johan Townsend, the realtor. Oh, okay, okay. So uh, we gotta we gotta get there. Um, are the pigs uh, in a crate? Huh? I run by and I undo the pigs and go yeah and whack one with my staff. Are you, I assume you aren't doing this stealthily. You should uh, try to do it stealthily. Or well, or yeah. Um, well, if she's gonna smack them because I have invisibility. I can do invisibility. Okay. 
Okay. You go invisible. You move over to the latches. How many pigs do you want to release? All of them. <laughs> Seven of them go in a variety of directions, all winking cutely into the crowd. The farmer, not so happy, uh, yells, pigs, my pigs. Somebody help me get my pigs. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, now, now that that livestock is is out on the lamp, let's go. Let's get out of here. Some pigs, some pigs, pigs on the lamp. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's why. <laughs> okay. Uh, that is fine. You guys move past. You guys are now back on the road. You will notice that right about here. Uh, Anthony Scarpacci is on the other side of this dilemma. He has a cart full of goods. It's kind of like a rickshaw. And he is like, oh, my heroin friend. Uh, because, of course, she rec he recognizes Camille. Zadar is a totally foreign individual to him. My dear, why have you not been by the eat? I am so sorry. It's just been so busy. And I, I have met my new bow and we've been very into each other <laughs> uh, pleased to meet you i'm deck <laughs> deck big deck big that's a, that's a, uh well it's somebody call me the ice man <laughs> okay no i'm thinking okay. I, I, I do not know what that means <laughs> i say oh i will bring uh, him by later uh, for dinner and we will talk about everything but I really, we really have to go. Yeah. <laughs> a piglet races in between Zadar's legs, and you are bustled from behind. Iceman, give me a dexterity check to stay on your feet. All righty. <laughs> All right. Uh, 22. Uh, 22, you stay, stand on your feet as a gnome is knocked flat on her ass as she was trying to chase down the piglet. Uh, grab that pig! Uh, I say, apologies, Sadar, throw me over your shoulder and run. <laughs> I do that. I throw, throw over my shoulder and say, we got to get out of here. <laughs> okay, that's fair. Here is the question mark. Okay. You guys... <laughs> are right here okay did you want to take the alley or did you want to go the down way around? well kind of uh yeah we would probably take the shortest route which would probably be through the alley right yeah I would yeah as, as you zip around with Camille on your shoulders, right about here, uh, you notice a surreptitious in, individual uh, lurking in the shadows. Um, how good of a view do I have of this individual? Not very. You just notice that it is an individual that appears to be lurking about. Can we know how tall it is? Uh, it's about gnome size. Mm. Okay. Uh, and, and as you guys get into this alley, this is what you see. Uh, this individual will start moving uh, northeast, or northwest, rather. Northwest. Okay. Uh, so up the alley and to the right is what they're continuing? They'll, they'll be right here at the Lavender Building where Ree Max is doing a showing. Oh gosh, that's the that's where we were. Yeah. When the uh, catastrophe happened. Maybe we need to nab that person. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. Let's <laughs> let's try to intercede as much as possible. Maybe cause I don't know. Uh, Put this person on the spot somehow. <laughs> so. Sure. Uh, you are currently carrying Camille. Yeah. How uh, far I'm away are we from that person? I think you're about 80, 85 feet away. Oh, I was going to say you could throw me at her, but that won't work. Oh, I don't want to know, Tasha. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> 
uh, yeah, we'll, we'll just go ahead and, um, yeah, kind of, uh, well, I mean, do we want to do something like web and just say, oh, if it's the wrong person, oh, I'm sorry. Does web yeah. go that far? We thought you were somebody else. Web goes, web only goes 60 feet. Oh, okay. Well, so if we can get closer. Yeah, let, let, let's hustle ourselves up there and try to get closer. Okay. Uh, the individual sees you, and they also pick up the pace. Okay. All right. This person's really acting kind of cagey. So, uh, As they reach this intersection, they will go north. Uh, east. Uh, let's see. You know what we could do? I have invisibility. You have invisibility. We can... She just used her invisibility. Oh, she just did. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, well, okay. you could go ahead of me. Okay. I mean... And, like, I, trip I, the person or something. Okay. Uh, what I could do is speed things up. And, and I can misty uh, step. Okay. You can do that. <laughs> so you're going to misty step and Zadar's going to run? Yes. Yeah. As, you, as you guys round the corner, uh, uh, Camille, D12 against me. Nine. Six. Uh, Camille, you come out of your misty step, but directly in front of you is a no. Time travel. Time travel. Time travel. Zadar, you come zipping around the corner. You can both see the individual running now down the street. Um, seems to be wearing a cloak of some kind. Uh, every once in a while it does the turn. Uh, but Camille, every time you try and sidestep, time travel. Time travel. I do shocking grasp. Oh, shit. <laughs> I ain't playing. Okay. Hit him. Nineteen. Yeah, you light him up. You taser. Don't taser me, bro. Uh, you light him up. He's a... And falls uh, flat. Uh, little tendrils of smoke coming off his body. Uh, and you hear... Uh, Zadar, you come running up. You see the smoking gnome uh, with the sandwich board on. Over to your right uh, is a lady wearing a red jacket and blue sleeves. Uh, thank you. That guy was driving me nuts. Are you too interested in uh, a townhouse by chance? No! We're a little busy at the moment, but we may check it out. Uh, oh, let me give you my card. Okay, I grab the card and we go. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's a gnome. And he's not moving very fast because he and Camille are, have short, short legs. So uh, he is now tripped, or he or she, my apologies, is now tripped right about here. The, the skulking now, or? The skulking now. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, well, uh, I'll, I'll make a dash action to try to get to the now. Uh, be like 60 feet. Yep. So D12 against me. Ooh. One. Uh, Eleven. Uh, yeah, you pounce upon him right at okay. the end. Okay. And do I get a good look at this individual now that I pounced on? You said him. Him. Uh, no. Uh, young. Uh, early 20s, maybe. Uh, he's got this really dumbass headgear on underneath his cloak. It's got a little propeller on top of it. Uh, he looks at you. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't know it was yours. Uh, yeah, yeah, give that back. <laughs> uh, he hands back a, a woman's purse. 
Okay. It's like right. the size of a coin purse, and it smells very fragrant. Okay. Uh, and it's just like, well, if it was an accident, we didn't have this, then I think everything's good. That looks a little weird on you. Uh, by this time, Camille, you have also caught up to him. Uh, and uh, something a little off on this guy. Maybe a little okay. spooked for me. Uh, but, okay. okay. But he goes, I, I, I was just getting a drink before I got back to work. I'm sorry. I didn't know it was yours. I picked it up. I should have asked. I didn't. My apologies. I'm very sorry. No harm, no foul, my good man. And, uh, yeah. I go away now. I don't know. Oh. I don't know. I don't trust him. Okay. Something you want to ask him. <laughs> what are you doing skulking oh. around the back alleys? I was thirsty, so I went over to the tavern on my break, and I was just headed back, and you guys were there, so I had to go around. Um, well, they're chatting. I'm checking out the, the bag. What's in the bag? Uh, spell components? Okay. Alright. It's, uh, it's a leather bag with the initials GG on it. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> you said this person had a propeller on? An individual that you've stopped has. Okay, all right. He's got a propeller beanie on. Okay, what about the um, the outfit that they're wearing? Is it a leather trench coat? Uh, it looks like faux leather uh, with sheepskin. Okay. All right. <laughs> it's just like, okay, we got we got a couple more questions we want to ask you. And, as long as you don't hit me. Now, you guys are standing in the middle of the street. People are going by. You can hear that Remax lady yelling out. Oh, would you like to look at a townhouse? Oh, would you right. like to look at a townhouse? Right. I'm itching to punch this guy. But I'm holding back. He, he's, he's, not, he's, he's, back on, front. <laughs> he, he's back on his feet. Totally, you know, compliant. Hmm. Uh, where's the priest when you need it? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I'm going to ask you this again. Where did you find this? And where did you get that hat? I got the purse where I was peeing uh, there in the alleyway. Uh, and the hat. My uncle gave me this hat. Who's your uncle? My uncle is, uh, crap, what's his name? Oh, Zeppelin, Zeppelin, Zeppelin Smith. Uh -huh. I've met this film before, haven't I? I thought I have met somebody with a, with a propeller on their head before. You did, that was in cacophony. Oh, oh, okay. I was going to say, I'm getting confused, yeah. Yeah, okay. I am Spitfire, his nephew. I'm in charge of Dirigible Farms. <laughs> Okay. All right. Uh, all right. Well, you better get back to the Ritual Farms and get back on work. Good. My good man. You should check both of you. Okay. Uh, perception check. Yep. Uh, let's see. Sorry, my uh, spell my sheet. Wait for a we need to throw that cat off. Twelve. Uh, I've been throwing her up all night. Okay. Uh, Fifteen for perception. Okay. Camille? Twelve. <clears throat> you both hear a voice familiar to you. It appears to be chastising children, saying that their father will be home shortly as you turn you see Hortense Rockjaw cleaning, cleaning up the porch, yelling at the kids inside. Okay. Uh, I take a look in. Do I, in the bag, do I recognize any of these magical components? Oh, yeah. And they're, they're, from a, they're from a spellcaster or an alchemist, maybe. Okay. Uh, Possibly any, an artificer. Okay. Anything particularly explosive in it? No, not really. There's some bat guano. Okay. 
Well, that, that, that explains Fireball. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, do we send this guy, guy back to the virtual farms knowing what we know? Uh, no time travel. Anybody know time travel? Taste that guy again. I think we just tell him that he needs to be on high alert. Okay. We've heard stuff. Time travel. All right. Uh, we tell him that, okay, we're not going to stop you from going back to work, but um, we, we saw saw somebody around here who didn't look on the up and up, so keep an eye out. If you see a package like this, don't touch it. A package like the uh, the purse, the spell component thing? Anything like that. Sure, that's no problem. Okay. All right. Um, if you see it, when you see us around, we're headed in the same direction, too, to dirigible farms. If you see it or whatever, and we're inside of you, you alert us. How will I alert you? Where are you going to be? What are you doing? Who are you? Or <laughs> We're friends, of your, we're friends of your uncle. <laughs> What's your name? This is Camille. And I am the Never heard of you. Yeah. Well, we could tell you a lot about what's happened at, at the, the original forums for the past couple days. <laughs> His propeller starts to spin and he goes, hmm, the winds of change are coming up. <laughs> Okay. Well, Hortense begins to chastise uh, her children, uh, telling them to get their things in order. The Revax lady is yelling at the time travel, time travel guy, and a couple of people are starting to fill in, figuring out that hey, we can always go around. Uh, this mess and keep moving our stuff. Okay. Uh, this is, uh, yeah, starting to, <laughs> to pile up pretty fast. It's just like I'm starting to think three hours wasn't enough time. Uh, <laughs> so, um, yeah, you know who our names are now. We're friends with your uncles. If you see us, just yell or alert us. Sure. You, you also see hear anybody, another known. What You're in the nome. Yeah. <laughs> I said, someone near the original farms who doesn't look like they need to, to be there, acting funny, let us know. Okay. Shouldn't I just tell him? And he points behind you. And, was, and I turn around, who's behind me? Brock Hardjaw. Uh, what is he doing here? He's embracing his wife. It's his lunch hour. Okay. Um, uh, actually, yeah. Yeah. If you see anything suspicious, tell, tell Mr. Hardjaw. Sure. I can do that. Officer. It, it is, am I free to go? Yes. Yes, you are. Okay. Uh, as he zips off, rounds the corner, uh, you see him kind of fall back. Uh, oh, I'm very sorry. I didn't see you coming. Gets back up and runs around, uh, headed towards Dirigible Farms. Do I see the person he ran into? No, they haven't come out yet. Okay. All right. Uh, we'll head in that direction. Well, you make it to the end of the street, and there sits a goat. <laughs> of course. <laughs> you will recognize it as the one Camille did, will has maybe right <laughs> and it it and several sheep are just and so. you can see the butt of uh well you didn't get his name but his name is spitfire smith uh he is running across the open field towards uh dirigible farms one two three balloons hover above dirigible farms Weren't the balloons starting to explode or something? Come here. Not this timeline. Not okay. yet. Not yet. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, let's make our way to dirigible farms and start, start looking around. 
I would imagine. Sure. Uh, as you guys, you guys are going to cross kind of an open field here. Because uh, this is the Remax sail. This is where uh, Spitfire ran into it. Came down here and cut across to the southern entrance. Remember, there's a southern and a northern entrance. Camille is intimately familiar with the northern entrance. That's where her big fight was. You guys have opted to follow Spitfire. Uh, and as you head that way, uh, you see several sheep, several goats, uh, and then nothing because Spitfire goes into the tunnel and goes into dirigible farms, the old arena. Okay. So where was our final showdown at? Your final showdown was right here. That's what I thought. The townhouse. Was it, was it in the townhouse? I thought it was in the field past the farm, but could be wrong. Okay. You, you began to chase her here. Okay. Got it. You, guys, you guys came through here, spotted the leather trench coat. She ran up and ran down. Because uh, you guys were coming to Dirigible Farms to go ahead and clean up the mess. So how much time has passed? Since when? The three hours. When we first arrived. Uh, you guys are two hours into it. Because okay. remember, you ate lunch. You saw the birth of the sandwich. No, no, I mean us in our time frame going back. Right. So so we've spent you, two hours. Yes. So I'm like, I think we need to go back and see if we can get on top of any of those buildings. Okay. So we're just going to let whatever at the original farms happen and just catch whoever comes running back this way. I don't know. Okay, that's that's the dilemma that we have. I mean, we know exactly where this person is gonna be. So, I mean, we can lay him wait. Okay. That's fine. We can do that. Okay. All right. Keep in mind, there was a significant swath of damage. Yeah, that's the thing. At the time of the explosion. So, you guys can tell me which of these buildings you want to hang out by. And then you will roll an insight check to see if you remember if this was a safe area. Were there any casualties at Dirigible Farms, or was it just the... You the never made it there. Okay. Well, how do we remember? So, I would feel horrible about that because I just sent them to his dad. <laughs> oh. All right. Um... Alright. Uh, I hate to split up, but I, I've got to save Spitfire. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. You want to come with, or do you want to stick out the alley? Round zero. <laughs> you guys are on the 87th floor of... <laughs> yeah, don't say alley. <laughs> You're, you're at the top of Nakatomi Plaza. Um, what do you want to do, Camille? Because we can't. You go we, ahead. We I'll, like the rich form, I'll stake out the it. alley. Now, now keep in mind, there's two others of you out there, and yeah, there's there is. two Mrs. Hardjaws out there. Right. Yeah. There. See, that's why. Uh, <laughs> That's why I wanted to enlist their help. <laughs> but, um, okay, well, we know where we're going to be. I mean, eventually we're going to be at the at the townhouse. Right. So, okay. You know, it's up to you. What do you want to do? You, goes, you go play the hero. I'll stay here in the alley. Okay. You're going to have to explain to yourself who you are. <laughs> That's fine. Which, which alley are you going to be in? Well, where are we right now? Right now, you are right here. So. And we have the encounter in the alley by the townhouse. So I want to go up. Here, here is where you met Spitfire. Right. He came up here, Remax, 
went down here, you tackle them. That's where I want to be, right there. Right here? Yes. Insight check. That calls for new dice. <laughs> 17. This is not a good spot. Mm. Okay. Um. Mm. So, go back to the townhouse. Okay. And then down. Down. Right there. Inside check. Fourteen. Yeah. yeah. You, you think this... This structure is going to sustain some damage because the windows on the townhouse got blown out. So without seeing it, you know that there's going to be some damage here, but you're probably far enough away. Okay. Now, off the topic, who wants to D12 for something else? I'll let David do that. Fair enough. Zadar, you head towards the south entrance to Dirigible Farms. Yeah, so I, I cast Expeditious Retreat. That's to speed up my time, my pace. Sure. Uh, Camille, you will stand in, I assume, this alley right here. Yes. Quasi protected, uh, noting the stream of urine on the side of the building. Uh, Spitfire. Yes, yes. I'm just trying to look at things. <laughs> Um, as you wait, wander, give me an investigation check as you scan the horizon. And I go into my bag for another dive. Ooh, uh, 18. Uh, you see a few people moving about. Do I recognize them? Nope. Okay. Stay hidden or approach them? Stay hidden. Fair enough. Uh, Zadar, you reached, uh, successfully reached the south end of the velodrome, or, well, that's a Hippodrome. Bike racing. Hippodrome. Um, three balloons are perched up on the top ramp, and you see Spitfire walking across the field into what you believe are the offices. Okay. The hard remains from the one balloon are still burnt in the grass. Uh, the, from the bike. The, the yep. Before. Okay. All right. Uh, I am going to... Uh, um, still under ex <clears throat> expeditious retreat, uh, run to the office to, to get Spitfire. Okay. He has a strange item in his hand. It looks like a small paddle, only there is a ball, and it is held with some kind of intestine-like item, and he's <laughs> <laughs> trying to swat it unsuccessfully. Is Marty, he doing, is he He's not doing a good job of it. Huh? He's not doing a good job of it. You can't, his tongue's sticking out. He's, wow. Uh, he's like Mel Brooks, not like Harvey Corman. <laughs> so it, you, you, as you watch, you surmise that he's supposed to hit the ball with the paddle, but he's. Yeah. You can. <laughs> And uh, I, knock, I knock on the door real quick, boom, 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 and open the door. I say, Spitfire. <laughs> he drops his feet off the table and drops it and starts shuffling papers. Yes, yes, very busy. Uh, very, very busy. Uh, Zeppelin business here. What can I, I do? can see yeah. you, and we've got some Zeppelin business to do, okay? I've got it on authority from your uncle because he left with some friends of mine. Uh, there, We need to secure uh, this place. So, but... Uh, to do that, you need to 
get you out of here and we need to get these balloons going. So let's let's tell everybody to get their balloons out of here and get a, get ourselves out of this place as soon as we can because we we got we got information uh, from Colonel Plank that there is a suspicious person in this area and I think they're coming here to the original farms. Well, they're all in the jockey room. Let's go get let's go get them. <laughs> You go deeper into this arena, following Spitfire through a maze of uh, tunnels. Uh, it's pretty dark, but he's got a torch with him. And he's like, so how long have you been uh, with my uncle? Uh, well, you know, the, the problem that, that happened, like, the night before and all that, uh, over here, we, we've helped your uncle with a couple of problems. One with the, the gas leak balloon that he had. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, I helped him build that. Yeah. Oh, gosh. We'll talk about that later. Uh, and totally your the, friend. The thing that happened with the, the airships the other night. So let's, yeah, uh, jail. Let's, <laughs> let's, uh, let's get these crew members out of here. We tell them we got to secure the, the farm, so everybody has to go. Uh, so he leads you down the tunnels, and you go into a room lit with oil lamps, and you see a couple of individuals, feet propped up, reading like a newspaper, a couple of them are playing Playboy. cards. Uh, Spitfire comes in, he goes, gentlemen, I have an important announcement. Uh, we must now vacate this establishment immediately. Uh, we are under threat of imminent danger. The three pilots look at him, and one of them says... <laughs> jog on i'm busy out of the way I peck say, and those and i step in and i say those are going to be the last words you ever say I tell you what my friend it's just like i am here i'm under the authority of his uncle and also the authority here from the uh from the justice center we need to secure this so you need to get your balloons up in the air and get your asses out of here now the three of them look around Piss off. You got any ID on your pal? Wow. Outside yeah. Camille, uh, give me a perception check again. Sixteen. There is somebody on the top of the hippodrome. <sighs> but it's not a person. And it walks kind of dodgy. Okay. Uh, and then as it walks around, you lose sight of it. Mm. That doesn't sound good. You can approach. Nope, I stay where I'm at. Okay, fair enough. Uh, give me another perception check. Oh, that sucks. Eight. Uh, you don't notice what's going on behind you. Great. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, Zadar, these air jockeys. I, I cut them off. I'm cutting them off at the knees, so I pull both scimitars and say, look, you fuckers leave here now. You can, you can either go out, go out standing or we can drag you out. Get your asses out of here now. I'm not fucking around. Give me an intimidation check. Because you're dealing with Chuck Yeager's here. Yeah, I know. Nat 20, bitch. <laughs> not you, the guys. Okay, Stretch. Whatever. Don't make me whack you in the ass with the saber, because it's going to be with the pointing at <laughs> Get out. Boys, let me, let me just get my shit. Uh, as you... Uh, are you doing this? Um, all of a sudden. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, are the building shakes? There are three explosions. Camille, you can still see the balloons from your vantage point, and one by one, they explode, with the largest one going off last. 
sending debris everywhere, peppering all of these buildings uh, with rocks from the big gap here in the arena. You don't know where Zadar is at. You know he's in there somewhere. Um, you don't know what you saw. You know what you just saw. And now you're starting to put together, uh, oh, shit, you and Zadar are very close to this location. Yeah. Uh, because at in the previous time, you guys were right there at Remax. Mm -hmm. Right. So. Is I, Camille safe where she is? Uh, she has to make a acrobatics check. No. My cat is laying on my paper. Roll. Nineteen. Nope, she sees the rocks coming, dodges around the corner. All, all of the windows in these buildings are now shattered. There's holes in the roofs. Several of these buildings are on fire. She looks around the corner. Holy shit. Balls. Um, Zadar, you are inside. The building rocks bad. Dust comes down from the ceiling, uh, knocks several of the oil lamps over. Small fires ensue. Uh, the air jockeys are freaking the fuck out because they don't know if you're the cause of it. They don't know what the hell's going on. They just know that there's a fire. Uh, Spitfire yells, follow me, I know the way out. <laughs> okay. Follow me if you want to live. Well, guys, we'll follow him. I told you, fuckers, somebody was fucking with your balloons. We gotta get out of here. Uh, you know what, Zadar? I'm gonna let you roll to see if Spitfire really does know the way out. Uh, Liar! 17. <laughs> uh, am I rolling a d12 or a 20? 20. A 20? Okay. So 17? Yeah. Interesting. Um, Spitfire takes you through winding tunnels. He still has his torch. Uh, the air jockeys are now pushing on your acid arc. Give right. me an insight check to see if you know what direction you're going. There's winding tunnels, uh, and you guys come to a door. Now, Camille, give me an investigation check. Twenty-two. You see a figure emerge from right here in this alley. The figure steps along, doesn't appear to be injured, and is surveying the damage. How far away am I? You are 120 feet. The individual is staring with its back to you, uh, looking at the damage, hands on hips. Uh, you can't really tell if they're a victim, a helper, or a herder. How tall are they? There are no. Mm. Camille. <laughs> you hear the spirit of Sadan. If I could find my card, the cats are laying on. Um, <coughs> they are a 
long way away. Mortimer's human, isn't he? Or is he a noun? Mortimer's human. Yeah. Just a short one. No. He's tall. He's tall? No, I did. Um. Am I still in the place where I was hiding at? Yes. You're right here by the hand. The individual is right here. I stumble out and... D12 against me. Six. Six. Reroll. Six. Two. Uh, startled by the explosion, an ox comes barreling down this alleyway and gets to the open area. Okay. What do you want to do? Mm. And come look for Zadar. <laughs> that would probably be a good idea. Look Footsteps me. are heard behind you in the alley over here. Footsteps? A heavily booted metallic foots. Oh, footsteps. Lord. Footsteps. <laughs> yeah, I go run and try to find Zadar. So you head out this way and you hear behind you clank, 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 clank. Period behind you, you notice Colonel Clank and his two associates are running up behind you. The ox is scared <laughs> and it begins to run parallel to you. You notice in front of you the leather coated female gnome spots you to you four five <laughs> and she begins to take off across the open field. At the same time, Zadar, you emerge from right here. <laughs> How far away am I from her? Uh, from her, you are still about a hundred feet. Well, you know what? D give me a D6. We'll do this the fair way. Four. Uh, you close the gap 40 feet. So you are uh, 80 feet away from her. Uh, running with the ox, running with the uh, Colonel Clank and the guards. Uh, she looks to the left, sees you guys coming, looks to the right, hears Zadar coughing, along with the three air jockeys and the Spitfire. Uh, Zadar, give me perception check. Uh, perception. Sixteen plus eight, twenty-four. <laughs> you see the glint of metal. Uh, as Colonel Clank and his two associates come barreling towards you, you also see the fucking cow uh, and a pair of little legs on the far side of the cow indicating a gnome. You then widen your view and you see a gnome wearing a long leather trench coat. Uh, can I still misty step? Can you, yeah, you can still misty step. That's what, first level? I think so. I think yeah. so. Yeah, you still have uh, that. So I want to do that and cast web. Uh, fair enough. Um, I have to roll strength check, if I'm not mistaken. Let me see here. Now well, let me just roll it. Uh, an eight is not going to help me at all. No, so it won't. My assumption is you will connect to several pieces of debris, uh, but that's not going to hold her very long. Well, I got a 14. 
Yeah, I don't think you have to hit her. Oh. Yeah, you cover her, but since there are no good anchor points, it's not going to take long for her to rip out. Zadar, She's going to be tangled up in it with herself. Yeah, you notice. Well, yeah, but she'll run it with it tangling off. <laughs> Zadar, you notice the web activate, knocks her to the ground. Camille is running with her little legs. The ox is going to go odd left, even right. Even right, headed towards you, Zadar. Are you wearing anything red? No. <laughs> uh, now you have to decide, because the ox is just uh, 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 barreling. So, do you want to dive to your left, or do you want to dive to your right? Each is going to require a roll. How far is the, the bull in front of me? Uh, it, it is charging about 30 feet away. It is scared shitless because Camille just sprayed silly string all over the place and it does not know what the hell's going on. There's buildings on fire everywhere, including this pink building and the one next to it. Okay. Uh, so I think this is the pleasure pit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I am actually going to run towards the bowl and then misty step past it. <laughs> nice. Um, straight up D20, make sure you don't fuck this up. All right. Or it's going to misty step your ass backwards. Uh, 15. Yep, you time it correctly and boom. <laughs> Does it hit Spitfire or his two associates? I'm going to roll, uh, there's four of them. I'm going to roll four D20. And if I get a one, I hit him. That's a one. Oh, shit. Which one did you hit? A one, a, a one, a two, a four, and a four. Apparently, the bull is trying to pick up a spare. Okay. Uh, one, Spitfire is hit. Spitfire is going to take a lot of damage Spitfire takes a lot of damage. A shriek is heard. The Spitfire is run over by the oxen. Uh, you have Misty Step past it, so you're a good 45, 50 feet away. You and Camille are now triangulating on the lady underneath the web who is uttering something and sizzle goes into effect. Uh, Clank and his men uh, one will go after her, two, three, and four will go after the airman. Two, they are going to go after the wounded man because you always try to have to protect before you can serve. Yeah. <clears throat> so they charge past on the heels of the oxen. You two are in this fight alone. Uh, the burning hands that she has cast has now burnt off all the webs. All three of us, initiative. All right. Good crap. <laughs> All right, 15 plus 4, 19. 12. <clears throat> Zadar, you are 40 feet away. Um, she is going to have to do a constitution save, 15. Uh, 14 plus 2, oh, 16. She, oh, she just beats it. God damn it. <laughs> Come here. Right, I, I, use, I use my action to, to dash forward towards her. What, what did I just roll for? Uh, I was going to vortex warp her right to Colonel Clay. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, okay, so then you dash. Fair enough. Camille, you're up. Uh, you're closing the gap. So, uh, you're a little bit closer than Zadar until he dashes. What do you want to do? So I'm trying to hit her. Her? With what? Uh, let me figure it out. You got magic missile. <laughs> Let's do that. Okay. How many are you going to cast? All of them. Uh, Fire it all. 
Up, up cast to four of them. <laughs> yes. Go ahead and roll 4d4. She spins around and shoots the flame arrow at um, Camille. 13 plus 7 is a dirty 20. Uh, 2d10 fire. Fire. Camille takes 10 hit points of fire damage. Uh, the metal discs that are pop out legs, and they look like metallic spiders, and they are intercepting you. New round. Uh, keep in mind, you guys weren't very far away from Colonel Clank. Uh, just saying. Uh, Zadar, you're up. Okay. Uh... I'm gonna let magic missiles fly. Uh, that's um, you said there were three spider things. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, one for each of them. Okay. Okay. Okay, that's three points on one. Three points on the other. And five points on the third. Three, three, and five. Fair enough. Camille, you notice that Zadar is engaged with some kind of robot spiders. You're up. Oops, lost that one. Eighteen. I'm pretty sure that hits. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me, yes, that does hit. Six. out of existence. Uh, Zadar, you have three metallic spiders on you. Okay. <laughs> uh, three more magic missile. Uh, they're, they're going after you first. Oh, oh, I thought you meant it was my turn. <laughs> nope, not yet. Uh, 10, 13, and 16. Uh, 17, 14, and 11. 17, 14, and 11. Um, yep. Let's see. Any of those? Uh, the 17 will miss, but I will uncanny dodge. Why are you uncanny dodging if a 17 misses? No, I said the 17 hits. The others miss the 17 <laughs> hits. Okay, fair enough. Uh, you are surrounded. Uh, now, new round, you're up. All right. Uh, three magic missiles will fly. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, let's see. Okay, three, three, and three. Still up. Camille, you're up. Uh, you 
don't see her. Ten. What are you doing? Trying to hit. What? I don't know. Yeah, you don't see her. So, what are you, what are you trying to hit with? Okay, I want to help Zadar. Okay, uh, ten is not going to do any damage to that. Um, her turn, and the three spiders on Zadar. Four, seventeen, and fifteen. Uh, eighteen and sixteen. Uh. 18 will hit, but I'll uncane dodge that again to half it. Okay. Give me your dex. Now, was the last one halved as well? Yeah, yeah, it was halved as well. I just didn't get the damage count from you. Uh, seven, so take three, but I need two dexterity saves. Okay. Uh, the first one is a nat 20. Okay. Uh, the second is 20, not natural. And the third, uh, there are only two that hit, so you're fine. Okay. All right. Okay, you are not pinned down to the ground. Uh, your turn. My turn. Okay. Uh, the scimitars were out, so um, yeah, it's time to slice and dice. Okay. I am gonna green flame blade it and strike with the scimitar. Okay. Let's see. Uh, the nearest one is gonna take uh, an eighteen to hit. Yep. Okay. 12 to hit these things. Okay. And it's 8 points slashing and 8 points fire. Okay. Down. And, uh, let's see. Uh, with the octane. Uh, let's see. Uh, 13 to hit? Yep. Okay. Slashing, that is 11 points of slashing, uh, followed by uh, sorry about that, uh, uh, and five more points of fire, so 16 points of damage. Two down, one up, Camille. Uh, there's only one spider left. You do not know where Gadget has gone. Give me a perception check. Twenty, not natural. You hear a sheep bellow loudly, and as you look to the left, you notice that it is on its side. Oh, that's the sand. So she went that way. All right, I'll 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 try to follow her. Okay. Um, remember, the goats and sheep have been tearing down this grass. It is now muddy. There are footprints going towards Remax Street. That away. Yep, but you still do not see her because uh, this is round two. She has a lead on you. Um, Zadar, your turn. Okay. Uh, let's see. I'm still fighting the spider, right? Just one. Okay. All right. Uh, with that, uh, yeah. Uh, 15 to hit. Uh, 
Okay, uh, seven points slashing damage followed by eight points of fire. Done. Uh, Camille, you're up. So am I still running after her? And you can see the footprints clearly uh, as you get into the area here. There is a significant amount of devastation right through here. These buildings are on fire. Uh, mud and debris are everywhere. Uh, so once you get into this region, footprints are going to be scarce. So what do you want to do? So there's nothing that drags me one way or the other. You can go straight or you can go left. I'll well, go straight. You have to have a premonition where she was going to head, so... I'll go straight. That... You what? Straight. Fair enough. D12 against me. Ten. Fair enough. Uh, on the far side is also mud. Uh, and you see footprints. And I go, oh, you bitch. And go after her. Fair enough. Uh, as, you, <laughs> as you run forward, you see her image. She sent the firebolt at you again. Ooh, natural one. It implodes on her. Ooh, that was bad. Firebolt or fireball? Bolt. Firebolt. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it. Something must have been leaking gas or something because she went up and she took a significant amount of damage. Top of the order, Zadar, you have slain the last uh, spider. Give me a perception check. Okay. Uh, perception eight, 18 plus 8, 26. Two people are running towards you. One is a short gnome female. The other is a voluptuous human. Oh, it's it's us! <laughs> <laughs> All right, and uh, okay. who did this? I I call out. It's just like Sadar. It's Sadar, <laughs> and I make my eyes change to look like Sadar's, like true eyes, like changeling eyes. Said it's me. I used Mortimer's uh, amulet. I've come back to catch the person that did this devastation. Uh, also, there was a catastrophe. Camille, whatever you do, do not cast Pulse Wave. What? Yeah, I'm you, and uh, I shift into her. <laughs> Zadar's appearance. Hello, it's me. Damn, I look good. Okay. <laughs> I say, okay, that sounds like him. Persuade you. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Uh, Persuasion, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay. Not too bad. Uh, yeah, uh, 18. I'm sorry. One more time? The dog? It's i I'm you. I'm from three hours in the future. I used uh, Mortimer's amulet. There is this catastrophe that happened. We're chasing the person who, who did this. Camille was probably squaring off Camille from the future with them. 
and we gotta go help her. We gotta we gotta help her. We gotta help person. her not use pulse wave. And I said, I can, Camille. I cannot stress enough. Do not use pulse wave. Fair enough, um, Camille. You are up here, mano a mano. You versus her. She is on fire. She is spitting mad. Uh, and it looks like she's going to cast another spell at you. What do you want to do? But she's no. literally no. on fire. I'm sorry? I said she's literally on fire. She was. She's patted herself out. Ah. But it is just you and her in this open field. Yeah, I know. I'm looking. Mm. You got pulse wave. What else do you got, Camille? <laughs> Let's do that. Pulse wave it is. Uh, uh, remind me what it does if you have the card. I Are there do. any bystanders? <laughs> no, they're in an open field. But my eyes are shot. Uh, third level spell. Uh, you create an intense pressure, unleash it in a 30 foot cone, and decide whether the pressure pulls, pushes. Uh, each creature in the cone must make a constitution saving throw. What's your spell DC? I have no idea. Uh, bottom right in the square. I don't think I saved. Fifteen? I did not save again. Or, no, I didn't save this time. Uh, six D6 worth of damage. Do you want to roll, or do you want me to? Oh, go ahead. I trust you. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> that does that sound good, man? 21. Uh, she implodes. <laughs> Oh, and time repeats itself. <laughs> History repeats itself. But not in a bad way this time, I guess. Uh, Zidar, what do you want to do? Uh, you have convinced yourself. And I, I look like myself now. And, uh, yeah, I'm just like, we gotta go. We gotta get, catch up to Camille. Okay. You guys run that way. Uh, do you hang left? Uh, uh, point, point again where we are. You, you are right here. Okay. Uh, last time, you were right here when all the mess happened. Okay. Uh, we're going to continue going straight to the open field. I saw where Camille was running, right? Mm -hmm. No? No, nope, because these two buildings, these four buildings are all on fire. Okay. All right. Uh, we're we're gonna. Are we able to run past those 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 buildings? Yeah, if you want. I mean, is there enough like safe space between the planes or whatever for us to get to the that juncture in the alley? There is, but I I mean, the only information you have is in in game is. She ran this way, and last time she went down the street. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're going to run run to where I knew she was last time. Okay. You get to the intersection. You see complete, uh, or not complete devastation. Uh, however, there are several people that are injured, several people who appear to be dead. Okay. 
Uh, am I able to determine that this is from the blast and not the mail? Insight. Okay. Uh, 17. There's a lot of holes, a lot of debris. You don't think this is caused by pulse wave. Okay. I, I am looking around. Do I see any indication that would tell me that uh, Camille would have ran elsewhere? No, but you do notice a few things. Okay. You notice that the Remax lady is alive. Okay. You notice two children crying over the body of a lady in the street. Oh, okay. And you see three other people who are in various states of injury. Okay. But um, you do not see Camille. You do not see the leather-clad uh, gadget. Okay. Um, Give me a constitution check, by the way. Oh, yeah. Okay. Constitution check. Uh, 14. Uh, you feel queasy, but you're okay. Okay. Uh, I'm just like, well, we've, we got to attend to these people. Um, uh, I have no idea where Camille from my time went. I can only assume she's somewhere in this area. Camille, uh, you have successfully blown up Gadget. Uh, her guts are all over this field. There is a goat <laughs> sniffing around. It appears that it's going to go ahead and eat the innards of this dead wizard. Oh, this fine. <laughs> what do you want to do? Um... I guess I should go probably find Zadar. You're just going to leave the blood, guts, and stuff all over the place? Sure. Okay. As you walk back to where you last saw Zadar, uh, you come to this intersection here. Give me a perception check. Twenty-one. Uh, you look down this, you notice the Remax lady uh, is hovering over sandwich board guy. Uh, time travel, time travel. Uh, he <laughs> dies. Oh, no. uh, you notice two Zadars and one Camille trying to help people, very uncamille like uh, but they are right here in the middle of this intersection trying to help people. You also notice two children crying over a corpse. Um, so, you guys are all together. Well, Neil, do you head down that road or say, fuck this noise, I don't want to be meeting myself. Oh, and Zadar, I need a percentile roll, please. Okay. Oh, Frank, you having me roll percentile rolls with devastation? Uh, <laughs> not exactly. Okay. Uh, 46. <laughs> okay. Uh, Camille, did you want to join the others or hang back? I'm hanging back. Fair enough. Zadar, uh, you're starting triage with Zadar. Camille is looking around. Uh, these guys weren't here at the time, unlike your previous timeline. Uh, they got hung up chasing piglets. <laughs> So they were not in the townhouse at the time of the explosion. They were being heroic, helping Antonio Scarpacci catching piglets and 
he's been drinking because he apparently saw Camille earlier. <laughs> so everything's a little bit weird there. What would you like to do, Zadar? Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, approach the, the children that are crying over the body. Okay. Uh, a rock has landed right in the face of this female, clearly female known corpse. Uh, blood stained dress. The kids are traumatized. You recognize the dress as the one worn by Hortense Rockjaw earlier. Um, my mom is my mom is dead. My mom is dead. Uh, I'm just like kids come come over here and um I'm gonna cover mommy. I'm gonna take off my cloak and cover mommy. Alright. Well, what what is the other you doing? Uh <laughs> oh okay, I get to play the other me. Um uh do I perceive a perception at the other end of the alley? If it's Camille? Nope. You've got your back to her, but I'll give you a perception roll. Okay. Uh, okay. I rolled a 19, and my uh, perception is plus 8. Right, nine, 19's fine. Uh, an individual familiar with you is in front of you coming this way at a very fast pace. Uh, the muscular individual is Brock Hardjaw. And I, I look to Sadar. Uh, Sadar from the past has covered up uh, the, the body of Mommy. Uh, you, you covered up the body of Mommy. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Sadar okay. from the past. Yeah, no. Or future. 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 Future had covered up. Yep. Uh, which one sees Brock coming, or do we both see him? You both see him. Okay. And this guy is a person of authority, so just gotta. I I tell him it's it's Brock. This is this is his wife. We're gonna have to tell him what happened. I'll I'll I'll, I'll tell him all of it on what happened on my end. So. Twins are going to talk to Brock Hardjaw. Yeah. Interesting. What is Camille doing? David. Camille? Mm -hmm. I'm thinking. No. Zadar's Camille. Oh. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, I'm, I'm playing Zadar's Camille? Yeah, because you three are together. Okay, uh, from which Camille? Future Camille or past? Past. Past, past Camille. Camille, okay. Uh, Future he, Camille's at the other end of the, of yeah. the road. Uh, hey, guys. Well, we went back in time. We took somebody with us. Because <laughs> it takes three people for the amulet. Yeah. yeah, no shit, it takes three people. Who'd you take? The person that's dead right here. So there's another one of her around here somewhere. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say Camille will tell you we need to get the fuck out of here right now. Yeah. Okay. All and right. maybe, maybe if we can save his wife, he will help us. Brock, Brock comes running in, distraught, horribly emotional. Camille, Carrie, at the other end, you're seeing all of this unfold. The gears are starting to turn, and you realize that this is not going to be good. <laughs> okay. So what would you like to do, Camille? Mm. <clears throat> decisions, decisions. <laughs> we still have the amulet, right? Uh -huh. We can do yeah. it again. 
You can, but Zadar has it. Yeah. And you're going to need a third person. Hey, Zadar. Hey, grab Brock. Let's do this. He um, wants his wife back. Yeah, yeah. But isn't, isn't she the future her still around here somewhere? Or killed her and then nullified the other one? I mean, we have a variant of her running around. Funny you should mention that. Okay. Because coming towards you through the smoke and rubble is a figure wearing the exact same dress <laughs> coming home. It doesn't take an insight roll to realize that you guys are going to get fingered for something really bad. <laughs> you still have not found Camille. She has found you. But you, you, and past Camille are right in the middle of the street with a distraught Brock Hardjaw and Lady Hard, Hardjaw coming towards you guys. Yeah, but they're okay. I don't care what you do. I know what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So is it a person or a new deal? What is your plan of action? Uh, all right. Uh, uh, well. Okay. Well, the wife has no clue. Right. Yeah, this is going to be a happy accident for her. Yeah. Commander Tiger is saved! <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I think honesty is going to be the best policy in this. I mean, that's the only way that we can get through this, right? No! <laughs> Probably, not. Probably not. We lie okay. our asses off. We lie Camille, our asses off. Camille, you see these three just standing there. I will assume past you is like, we got to get the flock out of here. Okay. Meanwhile, the Zadar Truth Twins are standing firm. So, real Camille, what do you want to do? All right. We'll turn. Um, I yell at Zadar. I'm like, we got to go. You yell down the alley? Yes. The Zadar Perception. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, 16 plus 8. You hear Camille yell, turn around, and okay. see her. All right. So the difference between you and her is Remax. Okay. Staggering like the walking dead down towards real Camille. Help! Help! And Just say, kill him. <laughs> guys, gotta go. Invisibility. Okay. And I look on down to Camille. Uh, Camille, you see Remax, lady. We need to help these people. <laughs> and you have no idea where Zadar's at. Isn't he coming toward me? Yeah, I'm coming toward him. Invisible. Oh. Um... <laughs> I tell Remax Lady, eh, not my job. Somebody has to help these people. Go ahead. Help them. Zadar, you have arrived. Okay. And I'm I'm quiet, so I come around the back of Camille and say, gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you want to go? Um, do you have an invisibility <laughs> available? Slot? She's out she's of a slot spells. Okay. Yeah, that was my last second level. So. We just need to run away. Yeah, yeah, we'll look. Run away, run away. Fair enough. Uh, okay. uh, tell her one? that there's people down the alley that'll help her, help them. So. So, you guys are right here. Where do you want to run to? Um, let's see. Uh, uh, Zadar, real quick, a little constitution again. 
Constitution is up seventeen. Okay. Where do you guys want to run to? Uh, blah, 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 blah. I guess uh, as far as we can from here for right now. So there's the map. Where do you want to go? But our uh, hotel. Huh? Our hotel. Yeah, you can run through here and around and go to your hotel. Yeah, yeah, we'll head there, even though I know that's where they're going to look for us, so. Well, of course. Pretty much. Uh, you guys have bugged yourselves really bad. Uh, so, Carrie, what do you think? Uh, you know how I feel about time travel. I don't need you guys to do time travel. It makes me cranky. <laughs> that one is not my fault. It is hey. your fault. It, it's absolutely not my it fault. It is hey. absolutely your fault. Hey. And I'm just like, I told you we should have enlisted our health. <laughs> wow. Uh, David, what'd you think? Uh, yeah, it was, it, it was a little intense, but um, yeah, we'll just have to see how, how it goes. <laughs> Uh, I can already tell you it's going to go poor. <laughs> yeah, see, he has a, he, he knows how it's going to go already, which means he's not objective. No, I have, I had three paths, uh, and you guys have selected your path, so. Yeah, we, and the dice we, rolls, and the dice take us away, paths? which means you're not objective. Yep, you picked one of the three paths, the worst path that you could have picked. Uh, interact with our old selves? Interact with your old selves and not get the fuck out of Dodge. Oh, Folks, it's been Murder Hobo Week, the Comedy Edition. You're going to have to tune in in two weeks to see how this mess unfolds. Follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter, take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to shoot the shit about D&D, &D, join our Discord. If you want to buy our cool stuff, uh, check out our shop. If you want to buy cool dice, go on over to Twitter.